Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome, you know, once again to our daily devotional. Those of you who might be new, you know, this is an opportunity for us to, you know, connect with God as we go through his word, you know, together. And so today uh, we are in a Genesis chapter uh, 22, Genesis 22. So while you're turning there, uh, let's remind uh, everybody what's important first. We want to live for Christ. We want to share Christ with others. You know, this week, uh, we also uh, know the, the Seahawks won last night. So uh, the season is complete. Uh, they barely squeaked it out. Uh, lucky break, you know, on a couple different things like a missed field goal and some poor decisions. But hey, we will take a W when it's a W against Russell Wilson, you know, right now. Now, uh, we hope Denver loses all the rest of their games. And uh, we're, we don't know, have any idea what uh, what's happening uh, with the Seahawks this year. So anyway, with that being said, uh, let's jump right in, you know, to what uh, God is going to teach us in Genesis chapter 22, which uh, is a hallmark, you know, of, uh, of, of uh, faith when it comes to um, our understanding of Abraham and Isaac. So check, check this out. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called him. Yes, he replied, here I am. I love that first response that Abraham is just so willing to say, God, you call, I answer. You call, I answer. I want you to hold on to that for a second because we have a different kind of response as an American mindset. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, uh, whom you love so much and go to the land of Moriah. So he just reaffirms, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much and go to the land of Moriah, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Okay, so to our mindset, we're like, what the heck is going on? You know, does God actually ask us to sacrifice our kids? Yes, not in this way, but yes. So let me give you a little background understanding. In that day and age, there were many gods. Uh, atheism uh, is only a relative concept today. Uh, throughout the uh, history of the world, you know, most people, groups of most people, believe that there is or God, you know, even those who just look at creation says, okay, there has to be a designer, there has to be a creator. So as they create these gods, many of the gods around Abraham's time frame would require great sacrifice from them in order for them to bestow blessing, uh, for the crops to grow, for rain to fall, for um, love to take place in their life, for a blessing to be provided. There had to be a sacrifice on the person's part to get the attentions of the God and order gods in order to sacrifice. So many gods, uh, without going into detail, in Abraham's day and age would require human sacrifice. Like if you're really going to believe in me as, as the one deity, as the God, then I am going to actually you know, uh, give my uh, child, my only child to you that you might bless my life, you know, in some way, shape or form. So this isn't um, out of the norm. Now, let me remind you that Abram, uh, before he became Abraham, was uh, an idol maker back in the land of Ur where he came from. So he actually carved into stones uh, in wood, you know, I think it was, was wood or stone, I can't remember. But uh, he carved into those things. He created gods for people. So he was very familiar with, he was very aware of what the gods, you know, understood and uh, required. So here's Abraham, who's following this God, who's being led by this God, who's being told by this God, and is getting to know this God. You know, he's trying to figure out, is there a difference between this God and others? And at this point, he thinks, yes, there is. But then it says, the God says, you know, God says, go and sacrifice your son. So he doesn't see this as an unusual request. And yet we see an unusual response. Let's keep reading. He says, the next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son, Isaac. Uh, and they think that Isaac, uh, there's a guess here, but he's anywhere between 15 and 35 years of age. Some even said maybe he's 33 years of age, the same uh, age that Jesus you know, died on the cross as well. We don't know exactly. We just know that he is obviously of age that he could probably push back if he wanted to, really, really wanted to, you know, uh, when it came to Abraham and his age. Okay, just no age and strength and all that other kind of stuff. So he says this, along with Isaac, then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set off for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, okay, it's not by accident that it's on the third day, okay? Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey. Abraham told the servants, the boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there and then we will come right back. 
Okay, so whatever Abram, and this thing, thing we don't know, we don't know the little thought bubbles, you know, the cartoons and the thought bubbles that we see, you know, on TV, you know, the subconscious or what people are thinking. We don't have that, you know, is, is our vernacular. So we're just guessing what Abraham is thinking. What we do know is a couple things. First, we know that right now he believes that even though he's been asked to do this, even though he's been willing to go up and sacrifice his son, that they both will be coming back. He's telling his servants that. So he believes that at this time. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, we have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. Okay, so again, he believes that God is going to provide. God is going to supply. So whether it's the burnt offering or as we read in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 17 to 19, Abraham, by faith, Abraham was tested, offered up Isaac, who's to receive as the promise, whom it said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, which he also received him in a figurative sense. So what he's saying in, in Hebrews chapter 11 is that he trusts God so much that he's going to follow through because God's word is so true and he's going to have, he's been told that it's through Isaac that he's going to be blessed. It's Isaac, not any child. It's through Isaac now. He's going to be blessed. You don't have this many nations and all that kind of stuff. And so he knows, he says, okay, I'm going to trust that God is so great that he could even raise, you know, um, Isaac from the dead. That's what we read about in Hebrews. And so as they arrived at the place where God told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. So Isaac is complicit in that, and he's trusting his father, who is trusting in God for what's taking place, which is absolutely amazing. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At the moment, the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, yes. Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you fully fear God. Uh, you have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Now let's just stop right there. What is it that you are holding back from God? God, you can have all of this, but what? Uh, for many, it is children. You know, God, you can have every part of me, except these are my kids. I know, God, you gave them to me, but they're my kids. And we actually treat it as such. God, you can have all part of me except for my resources. I'm going to trust myself with those things. God, you can have all parts of me except for my career. Um, I'm going to entrust myself to my career, to my future, to my destiny, to my whatever it may be. Think about what is it that in your life that you're saying, you know, God, you can have all this, but this part. What is this part that you and I might have a hard time saying, God, I trust giving this over to you. Now, God may not ask you to physically murder, you know, or kill your kids. He's not going to ask you to do that, but he is saying they're not your kids in the first place. Everything that we are, everything that we have has been given to us by the Lord. And so we have a chance to give it back to him. And so he looked at, you know, and Abraham looked up and he saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in the place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yaher, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, you know, uh, the people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. <coughs> Sorry. Not COVID. Uh, then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that, number one, I will certainly bless you. Number two, I will multiply your descendants beyond number like the stars in the sky and the sand of the sea seashore. Number three, your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. And number four, your descendants all, through your descendants, all the nations will be blessed all because you have obeyed me. Remember, with every blessing, it's never meant. No blessing from God is meant solely just for the person. It is meant for the person, but always through the person in every instance you see in the Bible. Every blessing from God is to be received and then also be able to be shared or used to benefit the life of other people. Then they returned to the servants and traveled back to Beersheba, which I talked about yesterday, where Abraham continued to live. Soon after this, Abraham heard that Melchel, his brother Nahor's wife. So um, all of a sudden, you know, we get introduced 
you know, to uh, his uh, brother, his family back in Ur, who were born, he had, he had eight sons. The oldest name Uz, the oldest, next oldest was Buzz. I was like, Uz, I'm sorry. I was like, really? You know, there's the family. Ever, ever come across a family where their names are, you know, uh, Mavis and Jarvis and Livis and Midas and, you know, you're just like, what? Why are the names of your kids almost all exactly the same? Anyway, always make cracks me up. The oldest name Uz, the next oldest name Buzz, followed by Camille. Oh, we got creative there. You know, the ancestors of the Armenians, uh, Kezet Azo, uh, Phil Dash, uh, Jill Pa, and Bethor. You should go back to the Uz names. Anyway, Bethor became the father of Rebecca. In addition to these eight sons from Milchal, Nahor had four other children from his concubine Reuben. Their names were Teba, Geham, Teash, and Maka. Okay, so again, as we're finishing today, I hope that you and I would be able to say, Lord, what is it in my life that I have a tendency to hold back? I know for me, um, some things that I, I hold back, I give to God and I take back. So I give to God, God, I trust you with my kids. Nope, I trust myself with my kids. God, I trust you with my resources. Nope, I trust myself. God, I trust you with my future and my health. Nope, I'm putting it in my own hands. You know, there's so many things, you know, that I do that in my old life, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. So with that, let's pray, and let's just uh, lift this up to the Lord. Lord, thank you for the example of Abraham. Father, in the same way like Jesus, you know, uh, you were willing to sacrifice your son. What an incredible picture of a father's willingness to do. And yet for Abraham, he didn't have to, but you willingly did. Your son willingly obeyed you and went to the cross so that we might have life. May we always remember that. May we always uh, give up to you what you have bestowed upon us. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, have a great rest of the day. Uh, Sue, I see your comment. If you hold on to something tight, it may destroy you, you know, uh, and then you'll lose it again. That's so true. You hold it so tight, you know, uh, it, you'll actually have a tendency to lose it. We need to hold things like this strong, but open-handed and allow God to work. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and uh, I will see you again tomorrow morning.